I've owned a Tesla for over two years. So before you accuse me of just hating electric cars, hear me out on five reasons why I think the Cybertruck is gonna be a useless off-roader. Overlanding and off-roading is sold with a lie. This, this is a lie. The ads, the endless YouTube builds, and the drone montages make it seem like some kind of digital adventure. It's not, it's analog. It's man and machine. Not man and machine versus the wild, but man and machine perfectly balanced to move through the wild. It's a concert of gears, grit, and yes, some aggression. But that aggression is disciplined enough to chase down some peace and remind oneself how small you really are. It's more a game of balance than one of extreme adventure. The goal isn't to eat up the road, it's to feed your soul. The best parts are everything they should be and very little that would sell it on a big screen. The Cybertruck is an impressive machine. Even groundbreaking, I would say. But it's a digital battering ram with an unbreakable tether to a world I try to escape. Okay, we're gonna kick this off with the most obvious issue, which is of course, power. And then we're gonna move from there to the actual deal breakers. The Cybertruck has really impressive range. It's coming with 340 miles of range. And if you want more, you can add a range extender battery in the bed of the truck. Did you ever notice how much this looks like a leash? But see, my problem is I don't off-road here. I off-road here. This is the town power plant. 28 people call this town home, and it's the base camp for many of our outdoor adventures. The problem with range numbers is they only tell part of the story. When I plan a trip, I try to stay as remote as possible. My routes avoid cities and traffic, and I refuel in towns like Jarbridge, Nevada. See, what I learned with our Tesla is that road trips are possible but you're always tethered to these places and these places are rarely where I want to go when off-roading. Most overlanders build capable off-roaders to experience a new type of freedom, the ability to go where they want on the route they want and to be able to camp and stay out as long as they want. And in order to do that, you have to cut the cord. Okay, so this one isn't a deal breaker either, but it's worth thinking about. Let's talk about aftermarket support. So if you think of some of the pros and cons of say, owning a Jeep versus a Toyota, you know, when you talk about Jeep, they have one of the largest aftermarket supports of all products out there in the off-road world. If you want a winch bumper, there's 10,000 of them to pick from. All of a sudden you step down to a Tundra and you have like 12. So when you think of the Cybertruck, it's gonna get rolled out very slowly over the next couple years. So there's not going to be a ton of demand for parts for it out there. Also, we don't know what the weak points of it are yet. Almost every vehicle that comes out does in fact have weak points. They always will. Something has to be the weakest link. And off-roaders love to go and strengthen those things. Think of the Bronco and its weak tie rods and it's weak steering box. So if you're an off-roader, a typical off-roader, and you wanna buy a car and you want to modify it to meet your needs on the trail, uh, that's gonna be really rough with a Cybertruck for a really long time. There is one company that I know of that has a bunch of mock-ups, but I don't even know if they're actually manufacturing anything yet. Not to mention that the whole thing's a 48 volt system. So you better know a golf cart mechanic if you wanna add any accessories and wire anything into the vehicle because all the accessories that are out there for vehicles right now are 12 volt and uh, it's 48. Which is awesome, by the way, that Tesla did that because that is going to challenge the whole entire automotive industry to be better. So this isn't a knock on Tesla. It's kind of awesome that they did it, but it's definitely not gonna make off-road accessories convenient for you. Okay, so now for the non-negotiables. If you off-road your truck regularly, you're going to eventually damage it. Remember those candles that wouldn't go out when you were a kid, no matter what you did, with your blue on it, spit on it? Well, with a Tesla, you're basically driving on a battery that's one of those. And if it takes a decent hit, you've gotta take it in to see some specialists. We actually got rear-ended in our Tesla in August. 
It is now December. We are still waiting in line for our appointment to get our car fixed. See, the problem with Teslas is you can't just take them to any old shop and you can't get them repaired any old way. I have a shop. I work on cars in here all the time. I can repair lots of cars, but I can't work on a Tesla. I don't have the equipment to tell if the battery's been damaged. I don't have the equipment to see if it's gonna turn into one of those candles that will never go out. The problem with the Tesla right now is that you don't understand when you buy into it, you're buying into a whole entire system. The, you know, with the other Teslas, they don't even come with spare tires. And it's like, well, that's fine. You get roadside assistance with a Tesla. Half the places I go, roadside assistance won't go too. Well, it definitely will go down as the most beautiful place I've gotten a flat. Look at that. Good. That load is heavy. That thing is bending. I gotta get that off of here as quick as possible. There you go. Nothing like changing tires with views. I noticed with the Cybertruck, they're finally like, oh, you want a real off-road vehicle? Well, guess what? We'll actually give you an option for a spare tire. I'm gonna tell you right now, spare tire isn't enough to cut it in the real off-road and overland world. When I take my truck to Baja, I take spare axles. I take a spare alternator. I take parts to be able to rebuild this thing on the side of the road if I break down because God knows I'm not going to get roadside assistance in the middle of nowhere in Baja. And neither is your Tesla. So for my first deal breaker, it is that these are going to be too complex to work on out of the gate, and it takes too long to get them repaired if you damage them. And you're gonna damage it. Off-roaders get damaged. I don't know. I'll win. I don't know what we can do for you. Oh. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Okay, so non-negotiable number two. Teslas are optimized to make driving decisions for you, not with you. My point is Teslas have an attitude problem. Teslas want to drive themselves. It's an inconvenience that you're even in the vehicle and they just kind of pretend to accommodate it. We were driving on a freeway and it was in like the auto drive mode and we were coming up into one of those wedges where we were going to get stuck between two semis. So my wife hit the gas and accelerated past them. But since she hit the gas and accelerated past them in the auto driving mode, it said that she exceeded a speed limit and that she was now grounded from using that feature for the rest of the drive. My wife's car that she bought with money grounded her from using features of the car. So when you go off-roading and you're in a really difficult rock section and tire placement is paramount, you've got to get your tire exactly where you want it to go. How do you think the drive-by-wire feature where Tesla's own brain that the car has gets to decide how much your rear and front tires turn, how do you think that's going to work when you're rock stacking to get over a huge ledge? You can't tell your car tire where to go by turning the steering wheel anymore. You simply put in input and then it decides where it wants to go. This doesn't work in off-roading. But props to Tesla again, drive by wire for driving around town and running errands in a regular errand running car. Phenomenal. The huge advancement in automotive tech. Okay, final thing on a Tesla that for me is a new non-negotiable because we learned this the hard way. When you buy a Tesla, you enter the market here, but then they lower the prices and they don't lower it a little bit, like $5,000 off. No, they lower it like 20,000 and then they lower it like 20,000 again. So if you enter the market early on a Tesla, you're basically stuck with it because what you would want to sell it for used, everyone can go and buy a new one for less. On top of that, battery tech changes. Who's gonna to wanna to buy a used Tesla with old battery tech that costs the same amount of money as the exact same model, brand new? So if you get into a cyber truck, you're going to be stuck in a cyber truck for a really long time. I wish looking back at it, instead of buying my car, I would have leased it. And then I could have just went and turned it in, no matter how much the market had depreciated. Might be worth considering if you plan on getting a Cybertruck. Look, love the Cybertruck or hate it, it's impossible to not admit that this vehicle moves automotive technology forward. It is a feat of engineering, 
I say props to the engineers. It is amazing some of the stuff that they pulled off. I am happy to see tech in cars continually getting pushed. When tech is pushed, we all win. It can influence every manufacturer out there and it can change the game and bring new innovations. So I am happy that the Cybertruck exists. Whether you love how it looks or you hate how it looks, I think it's almost impossible to not say that it is at least impressive.